This video is sponsored by Surfshark. <coughs> Hi everybody, I'm here in a forest. I don't know why or how I'm here, but I feel like I'm in more danger than usual. For the past 14 hours in here, I've been following these lemons around for anything. An exit, a treasure, maybe even a party like that one in Cars 2. No other party involving this specific fruit, please. I feel like that's definitely not good. Oh yeah, Pac-Man. Aw oh, man, that sure is seven-eighths of a circle. For 43 years and 5.7 weeks, Pac-Man has been eating through mazes and our hearts. From your local bar and grill to former President Ronald Reagan congratulating a kid for getting a high score of 6 million when that is actually impossible in the classic game The Kid Lied. He is undoubtedly one of the most recognizable characters ever. Now Namco, the company behind Pac-Man and a bunch of classic arcade games, recognized this and have plastered this little yellow freak virtually everywhere imaginable with a few exceptions, like I would hope there's not a Pac-Man morgue. But when it comes to the character itself and where he's put, that's when things start getting a little bit weird. Just like with a lot of long-lasting characters, they'll have a few major redesigns occasionally, but they'll still be the characters, and Pac-Man's no different. In my eyes, there's a three-way Venn diagram for Pac-Man designs. You got the classic circle with no limbs, the pizza, the pie, occasionally there's some eyes, but usually just the shape. It's easy to tell it's him. This archetype will very rarely have limbs, but there will almost always be no thoughts behind those eyes. Then you got the one with the solid orange gloves, the Pinocchio nose, and the goofy red boots. I think this one is just as recognizable as the first one, but I think it's utilized more. You can easily tell it's Pac-Man, it still has that lovely design, you know, it has like the same vibe as a nice elderly neighbor who everyone likes, and everyone in your family has a good relationship with them. He even has no teeth 95% of the time, just like an old person, so you know he's a friend. For some reason though, I feel like sometimes this Pac-Man occasionally has too small of limbs, like how does he put his boots on? He can time travel with no issue, but he Def, I don't think he can put those on his feet. This design, along with a few others, commonly has a family, which I think is very funny. There's all the important family members you would expect. Child, dog, baby, woman, and professor. It's the perfect nuclear family. In the Pac-World games, they're important because they get kidnapped and that's about it. Miss Pac-Man, the professor, and Pac-Man Jr. also have their own games where it's just the classic arcade games, but only kind of, sort of, so, you know, you know, it is what it is. And then there's the third type of design. This archetype is, I don't feel safe anymore. This is your other category of the diagram, featuring most humanoid guys, or the exact opposite of those, Midway Pac-Man, baseball human Pac-Man who has to stop an alien invasion, Family Guy Pac-Man, one of those dang anime games. I will admit these little goblins have a grain of charm, and they have their fans, but those fans are lame, and I do not respect their opinions. I mean, look at this one. This is the fourth worst looking design, and it makes me feel like I need a safety word. With these three major groups, then you got the rest of the other Pac-Man. They'll pick and choose what aspects to keep, what to change. Will he be high on crack? Will he just be a functioning person? Or will he have a toddler brain? It's all that gunk that's important to an extent. But with all of the good designs, you can still go, Oh, that's Pac-Man. Adam Sandler's pixels where he bites off the original creator's hand? That's a Pac-Man. He's a military feller? That's a Pac-Man. Car? Yeah, that fellow sure is yellow. The ghosts will also have their changes as well, but it's not nearly as often. They tend to just follow behind whatever Pac-Man looks like in a given game. Though sometimes they aren't even ghosts, just these weird flesh blobs. In fact, the very first game showed Blinky with skin, which makes me question how Pac-Man disintegrates being touched by them. Like, maybe they have tiny knives, and that's just them stabbing Pac-Man, I don't know. To an extent as well, I would argue the Pac-Man ghosts are overall just these little viruses of pure malice, being a danger in every possible situation. Speaking of which, my luck with phones this year has been absolutely miserable. This is like my sixth phone, and it's just been buggy lately. I think it's a phone virus. I didn't even know that was possible. Same thing with my laptop. I think the forest Wi-Fi is public. Like, I can, I can smell the danger in my device. Luckily, the sponsor of today's rambling, Surfshark VPN, is here to help. Say you're in your local coffee shop using their public and unencrypted Wi-Fi. With Surfshark, you can guarantee the protection of your hardware and data on as many devices as you would like. But that's not all, because Surfshark also allows you to change your virtual location. Say you're from the US and, like the Pac-Man fan I am, love the 2008 film Step Brothers starring Will Ferrell. Well, I'm sure you'll be crushed and absolutely devastated to find that on Netflix it's actually unavailable for streaming. With Surfshark, however, you can easily say that you're in Canada or the UK and then enjoy Step Brothers 2008 with no problem. Once again, I need to emphasize that an unlimited amount of devices can be used under the Surfshark umbrella. And for all you tubular goobers, if you use my link in the description with the promo code CHUPO, you'll be given three free months of full access and beyond that, a 30-day money-back guarantee. I've been loving it so far and please guys, like, actually, please, I need- I- this was my seventh phone, this was not cheap, and it's not like an actual shark, I was worried about that too, don't- I- I promise you it's fine. 
What I am still worried about, though, are those flesh blob ghosts, because if they looked like that 43 years and 5.70006 weeks ago, imagine how they would look now. Sometimes the ghosts are also portrayed as almost aliens or a different species, which is also weird because there's actually just also aliens in Pac-Man World 3 at least. But no matter what, that shit is on sight. Hell, Pac-Man even made a diss album against the ghosts. There is a hatred like no other. With these few exceptions, though, Pac-Man is otherwise normally a lower intelligence character with a good heart. Just like in Pac-Man Pizza Parlor, where a limbless Pac-Man leaves his arcade machine to help a random lady run a restaurant because her dad has amnesia. Okay. Also very unrelated, congrats to the guy and the ghost for being part of, like, the three dozen of the 8,000 Funko Pops that actually look good. Whenever he collaborates with any sort of media for that matter, it's usually the friendly neighborhood guy, and we just watch him in so many major crossovers. Mario Kart, Smash Bros, Minecraft, Fortnite, Sonic Dash, where he's just fast as Sonic, Cards, this, a not very good party game, but I think of all of them. The one that's not necessarily the best, but rather the funniest, was when he was a guest character in the fighting game Street Fighter Cross Tekken. As some bonuses in the game, a few guest characters were put into the game from Capcom and Namco. The most infamous being this Mega Man who they made look like a plumber, but Pac-Man's inclusion is also kinda weird. His mouth is always gaping wide open, ready for bugs to fly in with no issue. He's in this mech, which is kinda lame, cause if Pac-Man is gonna be in a fighting game, I wanna be able to punch him, not a giant wooden robot he happens to be in for no explainable reason. The plot of this game is that there's a Pandora's box, and everybody wants it. This is because the box has some incredible powers that can enhance strength, reverse age, send itself to space with people inside it, it can even do nothing. In Pac-Man's special ending of the game, we see him alone in a cold dark land of no hopes and dreams, with nothing left but himself and the box. He eats it. Not only that, he becomes a kaiju and recreates a Pac-Man maze in like Boston or something. Say what you will about this little dude inside a bigger dude, that sounded much better in my head. Say what you will about Pac-Man and a robot, but at least he doesn't have teeth. But you can sink your teeth into some advertising. Pac-Man is directly and indirectly everywhere. The NBA, Red Bull, Google, 7-Eleven, clocks, arcade prizes, pillows, slots, mahong? I think that's how you say it. Mahjong? I don't know. Watches, clothing, puppets, shoes, Legos, Reese's, peanut butter cups, and yes, of course, pistachios are just a few of the places you can get Pac-Man stuff. And before you exclaim to yourself and shout out loud, Oh, but he's not real. He wouldn't show up in my house. Oh, you foolish little bug person. So there's a few places where you can have like meets and greets and stuff. Though there's this one place called 257 in Schaumburg, Illinois. And I've actually been there before. This place is sick. It's like this giant entertainment center that has like bowling, restaurant, and you know, the, the arcade, what, like what you would expect. This place straight up bops. I, I would honestly, if you're in the outskirts of Chicago for some reason, check, check this out, this was sick. But overall, that's a lot of what Pac-Man's been a part of. I can get why he's everywhere. He's as much of an icon as he is the primary color, I think. And personally, I can respect the character who is an orb that is older than me and is most likely gonna outlive me and my legacy. Wow, that is a dark thought. So now I'm here existing and whatnot, and I'm thinking to myself, Hey, the video ends when the red bar is over here, not somewhere over here. What kind of Pac-Man related thing is so unfathomably awful that it is prolonging this experience for everyone? Oh! Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures is the least Pac-Man-y Pac-Man there is, and I think that's saying something. This show came into existence in 2013, the year after the year the world was supposed to end on a Mayan calendar that's over 80 years old. This is possibly the worst way to describe it, but imagine trying to make Pac-Man go from Pac-Man to Spider-Man. I'm not gonna explain what that means, but it makes sense to me. In this show, the pack is bad. Join Pac-Man and his high school pals, the Girl in Red, and other characters like Circumference. Skibo, the school bully, and the President of the United States, as they kill dead people deader and keep them in Pac-Man hell. Pac-Man also has powers here on, the, on this big power tree. Whenever Pac-Man eats one of these, he gets a power-up and elemental stuff like turning into a funky monkey, or being a planet, or losing all of his limbs like the classic Pac-Man. He and his friends will also just get gadgets for some reason, like this is too much. He should be waddling around in a maze eating things off the ground. This should be called not Pac-Man. I think my favorite part about the Pac world and Pac-Ville as a whole is the naming system. It's just Earth, but everything has Pac in front of it. Pac burgers, Pac people, Pac bucks. Don't forget about the Pac constitution because the planet Pac is part of a Pac democracy. Now I wonder how many times in this video I've said the word Pac. Though with this way of naming, Pac-Man's name should technically just be Man, which is extremely funny to think about, especially since he can't be mad about it since his parents are dead. But unlike Spider-Man, they died in the Pack World War, yes, this is real. See, the main bad guy of the show, Betrayus, and also brother of the president, hates his brother and wants power. 
He lost and died, but technically didn't actually die, but is such a hater, he got his entire army working for him. When bad people are bad in this universe, they don't get killed, but their bodies get taken away and they go to the netherworld. All ghosts try to get their bodies and noses back, but Pac-Man's special, since bright yellow pack people can eat ghosts. I don't know why, it's, it's, it's purely a color thing. The Pac-Man in this universe has endangered his planet before, multiple times in fact. He was part responsible for the ghosts actually regaining access to the living world, and at one point he was responsible for a famine because the ghosts were one time like, oh he can't eat us if he's full, and at that point the ghosts should have just starved the population. They were already almost there. And the funniest part about all of this is that this wasn't even the first Pac-Man cartoon because Hanna-Barbera released a show in the 80s. And that one's actually like other adaptations where he just has a family and runs away from ghosts and with the occasional cartoon antics. And also there is another Pac-Man president. Why are there two separate Pac-Man cartoons that feature presidents as primary characters? Despite this, I will still prefer the first one because there doesn't need to be a major world war plot, especially when your main character looks like this. Speaking of which, he looks like this. But why? It's Pac-Man, but it's not a very good one. To give an idea, here are two Pac-Goons. The one on the left is my personal favorite design for the guy ever. I wish this one was used a bit more. The proportions are just right. Amazing coloring. I prefer these red shoes over the boots. It's just where others are good, others might be similar. This one is just wonderful. So when you compare it, to my least favorite design, there's not that much that's different, and a lot of its flaws can be seen in other Pac-Man, but where they can get away with some of those issues, it's just enough to where this one is perfectly rancid. His gloves have fingers, his little shoe emblems extrude, his colors are whack, he's too shiny, his teeth pop in and out of his gums like cat claws. Pac-Man has had teeth in the past before, but it'll be like one giant tooth. That looks fine. This looks bad. This is not good. Giving Pac-Man only one tooth is fine, but tooth plural is blasphemy. Now that was a lot of negativity from me, but it's coming from a place of passion. Pac-Man is one of my favorite characters ever. He's just like me. He eats things, he runs away from things, he's a family man occasionally when it benefits. What more can you ask for? There's a reason he's been famous for around 43 years and 5.7001126 weeks. He's simple, yet it's simply fun. And it just happens that occasionally, slightly bigger hills will be made out of the Pac-Man anthill. And it works sometimes. And now thinking about it, I was right not to feel safe here. Because everybody knows that if there's lemons in a forest, you need to watch out for ghosts. See, there it is. There, there's the ghost, just like Pac-Man. Oh, yeah, uh, don't d d don't forget about Surfshark in the VPN. D wait, shit. Don't forget about Surfshark VPN. It's in the description. Okay, bye now.